Bienvenidos, welcome to El Museo Casa del Libro in Old San Juan, which is featuring my artwork. My name is Imna Arroyo. The exhibit that I'm presenting is called Aliento Divino, Divine Breath. It is an exhibition that, uh, that is reflecting from my work from 1992 to the present. It's an exhibit that brings in my trajectory as a graphic artist, printmaker, and bookmaker. And it culminates with an installation dedicated and honored to a major deity of the Yoruba pantheon, Elegba Eshu, a mysterious and controversy in some ways deity of the pantheon. It is our first teacher. It's the one that brings us through our past into our spiritual development. And in my case, I have chosen him, or perhaps he has chosen me, to bring him to San Juan, to bring me back home. I am originally from Puerto Rico. I was born in Guayama. And this exhibit is marking, in many ways, a return home, a return to look back at my past through my artwork. It also makes me feel that I'm not only looking at my past, I'm looking at my present and, as such, my future. It started with a book and a pataki, and that pataki brought me to the creation of the rest of the images. The pataki talks about the two farmers that were living together, and they adore each other. They love each other in such a way that brought the attention of Eshu as he was walking by. He looked at him, them, and he said, ah, if they love each other so much, let's see for how long. And he passed by the farm. And when he did so, he did it very fast, like a flash. One of them said, do you notice that? He was, I saw something that was white and black, and the, other, and the other one said, no, it's red and black. And that pataki tells us a lot about the story of how we find ourselves having two perspectives, because Elegua is about duality. It's about uh, having two parts of the coin. It is the same, but it's not the same. He is the ruler. He has the rules and he breaks the rule. He's small, he's big, he's everywhere. So that notion of having such complexity was a challenge for me to want to explore it, explore his dimensions and possibilities. As we move through the first and second room of this exhibit, we move to moving back because these are all new works. So we move back into my own development and my history. Another aspect of my, of my artwork, besides being able to study it in the island, have a sense of my own identity as a Puerto Rican woman, having a sense of being a black Puerto Rican woman, that have an interest in investigating the history and the legacies of my family, that started very early. My first challenges as an artist was to be, to develop my work as a woman that was, as a single woman with two children that moved from, left the island, moved to New York to continue a career in art and raise my two children. So my work at the time was reflective of that experience the experience of the struggles of women, the experience of how women manage to, to deal with all of the challenges of survival and still be creative and still be nurturing and still find ways in which she can develop her work and be liberated 
in a society that makes it very difficult for her to succeed. And in those early works, you see my images are more abstract. They move through spaces. They move through groups of people. And there is an understanding that even if you are in a society with a lot of people, you're still alone. But at the same time, you're not totally alone because you have comadres, you have a family, you have people that support you. And that work, I try to express women's capabilities, women's potential. In the works, Coming Out of Darkness is a series of etchings in which you see women starting from a very tight, tight space and finding herself with a group of women trying to get from those very beautiful, dark aquatins, because their etchings, their aquatins, uh, almost, uh, you know, how you come into light. And th those people, that portfolio talks about that process yeah. of liberation. It was in Aelina, when you walk through the dungeons and those dark passages that you realize the story of our ancestors in the homeland. You understand the history of captivity. You understand the process of staying in those spaces and not knowing where you're going and how and what's going to happen to you. And it was in that space that I realized that history, even that I have read many books about it, but never being in the space and breathing the air that our ancestors, uh, you know, that our ancestors was breathing. Talking about divine breath, that is, that connects us to our most in-depth spirit. And in that space of divine breath, I was introduced to the ancestors by realizing when the person that is giving us the tour said to us, and this is the door of no return, I felt a voice from the most profound part of my body, of my soul that said, no, we return. And when my voice came out, I felt like a, like a rough, Space, una carraspera in Spanish, like, ah, how the breath came out when I said that. And a man that was walking by, a black man, tall, handsome guy, was looking at me. And at that moment, he said, we returned. And at that moment, I felt, I understood. I knew that time and space is one, and that there is cyclical, that is, con is a continuum. And that experience truly changed my life. And it began the process of and trying to claim my history, trying to claim who I were spiritually, almost feeling like an archeologist that is going back through history, digging in, and claiming the spirituality that belongs to that belonged to us and was taken as an artist of Puerto Rican descent. I have learned about an ancestors at this level through Orisha. And little by little, as I started to look at other Orishas, I began to start looking at their history, looking how it connect with me. And it, and it was the process that brought me into my initiation into to become an, a priestess of Obatala in Cuba. La Sagrada Familia, the sacred family, is a portfolio of that I did in collaboration with my children. Isis Rakia Matei, is uh, and I 
we decided to do the research together because we were dissatisfied with some of the images that we found, especially about Oshun, that we were finding in the botanicas and so on. And I said, gee, you know, how are, you know, let's continue, let's look for possibilities to why don't we create a book ourselves? Why don't we create a portfolio that we can just uh, give it to you know our children that we can understand better the, the forces of the Orishas. And that book, uh, we researched 57 Orishas and the book includes 32 of them. This portfolio is all made in linoleum with collage. Eshu slept in the house, but the house was too small for him. He slept in the, on the veranda, but the veranda was too small for him. Eshu walked through the brown nut farm. The top of his hair was just visible. If it had not been for his huge size, he would not be visible at all. Lying down, his head hits the roof. Standing up, he cannot look into the cooking pot. He throws a stone today. He kills a bird yesterday. This oriki inspired this piece. This is a floor, a floor sculpture, and it represents also the story of both having Eshu and Elegba in, four, in, the, in the three colors. He, ex he had, I'm using the black and the red, and the white and the black of the, st of the initial story in the book. And I wanted to emphasize the four directions as well. I wanted to also emphasize the circle of quality of his energy because he is chaos, but at the same time he is order. I wanted also to bring the attention that he is the balancer of the universe and that he sees it all. This particular piece became the plate. In Spanish, the plate for printmaking is called Madrid. Madrid in Spanish is the womb. So this Madrid, this plate created all of the fabric pieces that we find hanging in this installation. Also, I have included the matrix, la matriz, the plates of all the other prints included in this exhibition. For example, this is a female issue. And usually we see more, we, talk, we see more the, the male issues. But in, since I've been so engage on the figure of the woman, the woman's role. I really wanted also to bring that issue is also male and female representations. We know, we understand that issue brings the prayers, but who organized the prayers? Who select them? Who makes sure that everything is correct is the female part of the issue. So I really wanted to represent that. And I also wanted to be inspired by sculptures that come directly oriented from Yoruba uh, iconography, because my familiarity is with the diaspora. And in this particular exhibit, I really wanted to go back and see where the source is. And again, making reference to La Madrid, making reference where everything comes, where the things, the origin of things, and how that informs us in our present and the future. So these ones are, these are woodcuts printed on, on, um, J, uh, on paper. And they are a couple, they work together. And over here, we have the issue, the one that came from the book that actually initiated everything. That he comes out, I blew him up into a larger print to I start walking through the space to uh, adjust as he is inviting us to enter the space. And we finish with celebrating Eshu Cosmico, the cosmic Eshu, because I was inspired by all the images from the web 
a telescope and how it opens up our possibilities and imagination that this world is beyond and is unlimited and is just so vast. And I believe that our imagination and our manifestations and our actions should actually get closer to the experience that we're having that there's no limit to our potential and for who we are. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.